Welcome to part one of this two-part tutorial series. In this video, we'll be focusing on modeling a castor oil dropper bottle from scratch. We'll start by building the main bottle shape, then work through the finer details like creating the dropper top, bottle cap, and the inner tube. By the end of this part, you'll have a fully modeled bottle ready to bring to life with textures in part two. Let's get started. All right, first things first, let's clear out the scene. I'll select everything we see here and delete it. Also, let me enable the screencast tool for you so you can catch every button I press in real time. Keep an eye on the lower left corner if you ever need to double check any shortcuts. For our castor oil dropper bottle, we're starting with a basic cylinder. So let's go ahead and press Shift A to open the add menu, then select mesh and add a cylinder. Right after that, in the bottom left corner, we'll change the number of vertices down to 16 to keep the shape manageable and smooth. Now hit Tab to enter edit mode, and we're going to scale the cylinder along the Z-axis to create that bottle shape. Press S to scale, then Z to limit the scaling to the Z-axis and drag to adjust the height, just like this. Next, let's switch over to edge select mode. You can either click the edge icon here on the top left or press two on your keyboard. Once we're in Edge Select, hold Alt and click on this edge loop right here. This will select the entire edge loop in one click. To round out the edges, press Ctrl B for bevel, then slide your mouse to adjust the bevel width, just enough to give it that nice rounded edge. Now switch to Face Select mode by pressing 3 on the keyboard and select the top face. We're going to delete this face by pressing Delete and choosing Faces. All right, back to edge select mode. Hold Alt and select the edge loop we just created. Now press Control F and choose Grid Fill from the menu to neatly fill this opening. We're gonna repeat this for the top of the bottle. Hold Alt and select the upper edge loop. Press Control B again to bevel it. Just a slight bevel here to keep the shape smooth. Next, switch to face select mode and select the top face again. Press I to inset the face pulling it inward slightly. Now press E to extrude it along the Z-axis, just a bit to add some dimension. Then press I again to inset the face one more time, and E to extrude downward along the Z-axis, creating the indentation at the top of our bottle. Now we'll select and delete this face to keep it open. Back in object mode, so hit tab to exit edit mode, let's jump to the modifiers tab on the right and add a subdivision surface modifier. Make sure to set the viewport levels to 2 to smooth out the shape nicely. To refine the shape, we'll add some loop cuts for better control. Press Ctrl R to add a loop cut, place one near the top here. If you want to select any of these loops for adjustments, just hold Alt and click the loop. If you're having trouble seeing these cuts with the subdivision applied, just toggle off the subdivision surface modifier temporarily in edit mode and uh, the cuts will become clean. So now let's turn the subdivision modifier back on. I'm going to press Ctrl B to bevel this edge just a little bit, rounding it out nicely. That looks good. Next up, we'll add another loop cut to define the shape a bit more. So hit Ctrl R and slide the loop cut up. I think that looks just about right. Now let's press Tab to enter Object Mode, right-click, and choose Shade Smooth to smooth out the surface. All right, now we're going to create a cap for our bottle. With the bottle selected, let's go back into Edit Mode by hitting Tab. Select this top edge loop here and hit Shift-D to duplicate it. Right-click to snap it back into place. Now press P and select Separate by Selection to make this a new object. Switch back to object mode, select the new separated piece, and press tab to go into edit mode again. With everything selected, hit S to scale it up just a bit to give it some space over the bottle. Now press E and extrude it upward along the Z-axis. We're creating the height for our cap here. To add detail, press E and then S to scale in for the rim. Now press E and Z to extrude it downward for the inside edge of the cap. Let's refine these edges by adding loop cuts. Control R, slide a loop cut here for more definition, and repeat with a few more around the edges. This gives the cap a sharper, cleaner look. 
For a clear view, press the backslash key to solo the cap. Now let's select this inner edge loop, press E and S to scale it in for an inner detail, and then E and Z, Z to extrude it downwards. This inner lip will help complete the cap's design. Let's add one more loop cut here, control R, and slide it just below the rim. Add another one down at the base, and maybe one more in the middle for good measure. Now let's give it some fine detail. Hit Control R again, and scroll up to add several loop cuts. These will help define the surface. Once you have them in place, switch to Face Select Mode, hold Alt Shift, and select these faces around the cap. Now press E to extrude. Right-click to snap them back, and S plus Shift Z to scale them in slightly, creating a subtle recessed detail. All right, hit Tab to enter object mode, right-click and shade smooth for a polished look. Finally, hit backslash again to bring back the rest of the scene. All right, next up, let's create the top part of our dropper. Start by selecting the cover and press tab to go into edit mode. Select this edge loop, hit shift D to duplicate it, and right-click to snap it back in place. Now press P and choose separate by selection to make this a new object. Switch back to object mode, select the edge we just separated, and go back into edit mode with tab. Now press A to select everything and S to scale it up slightly, just a tiny bit. Press E and Z to extrude along the Z axis until you have the right height, and then press F to fill in the face on top. Now with this edge loop selected, press Ctrl B to bevel it, rounding out the edge nicely. Press the backslash E to solo this object so we can see it more clearly. Select this edge loop again, press E and S to scale it down a bit, and then E and Z to extrude it down just a touch. You should have something that looks like a rounded lip. All right, press the backslash key again to bring back the rest of our objects and switch to object mode with tab. Right click and select shade smooth to smooth out the surface. Now we need to create the tube for our dropper, the part that goes inside the bottle. Let's select the top part we just made and go back into edit mode with tab. Press the backslash key again to solo the object. Now select the edge loop at the bottom, shift D to duplicate it and right click to snap it back in place. Press P and choose separate by selection to separate this loop into a new object. Head back into object mode, select the new edge loop and tab back into edit mode. Now, let's bring back the hidden objects with backslash. Press Z and select X-ray mode so we can see through the object, then press A to select everything. With the edge loop selected, press E and Z to extrude along the Z-axis, creating the main body of our dropper tube. Now press F to fill in the face at the bottom. Hit backslash slash once more to solo the tube so we can add a bit of detail. Press Ctrl B to bevel this bottom edge, rounding it off. Switch over to face select mode, select the top face, and then turn on proportional editing by pressing O or by clicking the icon at the top. Make sure connected only is checked to control the area of influence. Now press G and Z to move the face along the Z axis and scroll your mouse wheel to adjust the fall off for a smooth tapered effect. Lastly, hit Control R to add a few loop cuts along the tube for even more control over the shape. All right, let's bring back the rest of our objects by hitting the backslash and go back into edit mode. Don't forget to right click and select Shade Smooth to keep things looking clean and smooth. Now that we're finished modeling our cosmetic bottle, let's move on to creating a label for it. Start by selecting the bottle, then press Tab to enter edit mode. Let's add a few loop cuts for our label area, so press Ctrl R and click to add them, just like this. Next, make sure you're in face select mode and select these faces for the label area. Hold Ctrl and click along this loop to select the entire face loop. 
Now press Shift D to duplicate the selection and right click to snap it back in place. With the faces duplicated, press P and choose Separate by Selection to create a separate object for the label. You might notice some rough shading here, so we'll need to move our label slightly in front of the bottle. Select the label and press G, then Y to move it forward. To make fine adjustments, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge it just a tiny bit forward. Press Enter to confirm once it's positioned properly. All right, our label is done. Now let's parent everything to the bottle to keep it all together. First, press Alt-Z to enter X-ray mode, then click and drag to select all the objects. Hold Shift and click on the bottle itself so that it becomes the active object indicated by a brighter outline. Now press Ctrl-P and choose Object, Keep Transform. This will parent everything to the bottle, so if you move the bottle, all parts move along with it. Next up, let's set up our scene, starting with the camera. Create a new space for the camera, Shift A, and selecting Camera. Now press Ctrl Alt Zero to align the camera to your current view. To lock the camera, press N and to bring up the side menu, navigate to View and select Lock Camera to View. Then press N and again to hide the side menu. Now, let's adjust the position of our bottle a bit to center it nicely. With the bottle selected, press G and then Z to move it up along the Z-axis, just like this. Next, let's add a floor for the bottle to sit on. We're going to use a cube for that, so press Shift-A and select Cube from the menu. Once the cube is added, make sure you're in Edit Mode. Let's scale up the cube by pressing S to enlarge it. If you have proportional editing turned on, you'll want to turn it off by pressing O or clicking this icon here to avoid any unintended adjustments. Now press S again, and then Shift Z to scale the cube along only the X and Y axes, making it wide and flat like a floor. Press S and X to scale it just a bit on the x-axis to make it slightly wider. Now with the floor selected, press Art to rotate it and use the Z key to rotate along the z-axis to adjust its alignment with the bottle. Move it into place so it looks something like this. Alright, let's make a few more camera adjustments. Hold Shift while dragging the scene slightly to position it just right. Once that's done, press Tab to go back into Object Mode and hit Ctrl-A to apply scale to the floor. This ensures that any modifiers we add will work correctly. Now, go to the Modifiers Properties tab and add a Bevel modifier to the floor. Let's set the segments to 5 to give it a smoother look. Next, we'll add a background for our scene. Press Shift-A and add a plane. Rotate the plane along the x-axis by pressing R, then X, and type 90 to set it exactly vertical. Move it back along the y-axis with G and Y, positioning it behind the bottle. Now, press S and scale it up until it fills the background. Press S and Y to scale it on the y-axis, creating a clean backdrop. Finally, select the camera and go to the Camera Properties panel. Set the focal length to 90 millimeters to give us a more focused perspective. Let's zoom out slightly so the whole scene fits nicely in the frame. All right, that sets up our scene foundation nicely. All right, to start, let's bring up the side menu by pressing N and uncheck Lock Camera to View. This keeps our camera from accidentally shifting as we work. Now with our scene set up, we're ready to start texturing. That's a wrap for part one. Now you should have a fully modeled castor oil dropper bottle, ready to be textured and finished. If you're ready to move on, head over to part two, where we'll dive into adding materials, textures, and lighting for a realistic look. You can find the link to part two in the description below, or just click on the link on the screen to watch it now. Thanks for following along, and I'll see you in part two.